What a fool you are. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. How could you be so naive? There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. Come, lay down your weapons. It is not too late for my mercy. What are you doing? What are you doing? You fool! Stop it! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Counterfactual Gaming. And we are watching aircraft with self-sealing fuel tanks versus aircraft with no self-sealing fuel tanks. And as you can see, the self-sealing fuel tanks planes are doing better than the non-self-sealing fuel tank. But what you will notice is that the self-sealing planes are not doing twice as well as the non-self-sealing aircraft. Which means we need to talk about self-sealing fuel tanks and whether they are actually any good or not. But before we get started to that, I just want to remind everyone that if you like what you see here, go ahead and leave a like and a sub on the video. It really helps the channel out. And if you have any complaints about why in the heck the French and the Germans are facing each other over Benelux, when in fact Benelux isn't in the war, leave a comment down below. Uh, I won't have a good answer for you, but I'm sure I will have some kind of answer for you. So why talk about self-sealing fuel tanks? Well, they are an, an excellent module for aircraft. And whenever I see people talking about aircraft design in Hearts of Iron 4, in almost all cases, they are factoring self-sealing fuel tanks into their design choices. And in many ways, that makes sense, of course. I mean, it's the cheapest way to get air defense in terms of production costs and weight. Compare this self-sealing fuel tank to the armor plates module. The armor plates module has less air defense, penalizes range, and weighs more compared to self-sealing fuel tanks. Of course, the disadvantage is that self-sealing fuel tanks utilize one extra rubber and that's not even the worst of it we're looking at light aircraft here see this is my self-sealing light fighter if you take a look at this self-sealing heavy fighter you'll notice it costs three rubber well that's because self-sealing fuel tanks for medium aircraft use two rubber and when we're talking about how to increase air defense when everyone wants to squeeze self-sealing fuel tanks into their aircraft, they aren't considering the full economic implications of those increased rubber values. Let's be clear, this self-sealing light fighter costs two rubber. If I yanked that module out and put the armor plates module in, it's only going to cost one rubber. So if I'm a country that doesn't have a lot of domestic rubber, I could make twice as many of this plane as I could of this plane. It's even worse with heavy airframes because the rubber cost triples. So if you were thinking, well, I'll use my valuable heavy fighters, but I'll add self-sealing fuel tanks to make them better, you are tripling the rubber cost for every factory you put on it. So yeah, you're protecting your heavy airframes, which yes, they are more expensive than the light airframes, but the rubber you're spending is ridiculous. So how do we assess the value of rubber? Well, we have to figure out how much it costs to get all this rubber, and we need to understand what impact it is having because self-sealing fuel tanks increase air defense. So what does air defense actually do? Well, it reduces damage from air-to-air -air combat. And that's it. That's all it does. If you're losing planes to Division AA, it doesn't help. If you're losing planes to static AA in states, doesn't help. You're losing planes to armored trains, it doesn't help. Losing planes to attrition, it doesn't help. Air defense, as a stat, only impacts air-to-air -air combat. So if you are thinking about putting self-sealing fuel tanks on cast or on tactical bombers that aren't going to be fighting other planes very often, you're wasting your time. That tier 1 AA gun that some podunk country put in their divisions to shoot down your 63 cost close air support dual engine aircraft doesn't care how much rubber you spend on that plane. It just doesn't. So when we're putting self-sealing fuel tanks on planes, we're looking to reduce air-to-air -air casualties. And we want to get the most reduction in air-to-air -air casualties for the rubber that we are spending. 
But rubber is a complicated resource for a lot of countries. You can make synthetic rubber. Countries like Germany have a bonus to synthetic rubber production. You can also just buy synthetic rubber, and some countries produce synthetic rubber. Even more complicated, countries like Britain have puppets where they can just pay one factory and get 80 rubber. So when we're talking about the increased rubber costs of self-sealing fuel tanks, we've got to understand what is the true cost of what we're dealing with here in terms of synthetic plants or paying for it in terms of factories. Because self-sealing fuel tanks are not necessarily useful for several different countries depending on their economic circumstances. How much does rubber cost? Basically, each synthetic plant you build has the same production cost as two military factories. Synthetic plants cost 14,500 to build. Military factories cost 7,200 to build. One CIC will buy eight rubber from a non-puppet country. Now, of course, you gotta get that rubber home. So a country like the US doesn't just have to pay for the rubber, but they've gotta get that rubber from their allies to their country. Now, a country like Germany gets a plus two buff to synthetic plants from focuses. There's that wonderful German focus that gives them that bonus. This is why in a lot of multiplayer games, Germany becomes the rubber production source for the entire axis. There's no point in Italy or Romania building synthetic plants if Germany is just that much more efficient than them. And at 1941 tex, a country like Germany can produce roughly six rubber per synthetic plant. But remember, Germany starts on limited exports. That means sending 25% of your resources to market. So even though you can get six rubber per synthetic plant at 1941 tex with the special buff, you may not be getting all six rubber per plant because you might be selling some. Germany can go closed economy in order to keep all that rubber home. However, the Axis powers also buy a lot of like steel from Germany. And so restricting rubber exports in that way may starve the German economy in a lot of other ways. Plus, of course, you don't get the buff to construction speed, research, and factory output from limited exports that you get from closed economy. So you can't just say, oh, I've got six rubber per plant with the buff, so I should budget my rubber that way. Don't think like that. Even Germany is probably going to want to sit at limited exports at a bare minimum. If we assume we use Germany as our template for synthetic rubber, we can budget that Germany is going to have roughly five rubber per synthetic plant. At five rubber per synthetic plant, if you have 90 factories using self-sealing fuel tanks, you're going to need 36 synthetic plants built to satisfy that demand. It would be half that many if you weren't using self-sealing fuel tanks. Now, let's also keep in mind that you have to build those synthetic plants in the right place. We take a look at Germany's production in this save for a second. You're going to notice that rubber plants built in non-core territories are subject to the occupation law and policy and compliance. You see here on the screenshot, I, have, I built rubber plants in Moravia and I'm not getting, I'm only getting 10 of the 12 rubber I should be getting from those synthetic plants because it's a non-core state. Now that means that most players won't do what I did here. I did this to be an idiot. Uh, you're going to want to build your rubber in core territory. But let's be clear, if you're trying to build your synthetic plants in places like Poland where the Allies can't bomb them, you're not getting as much rubber per plant. But even at the best case scenario at 1941 Tex, 90 factories on light aircraft with self-sealing fuel tanks are going to require 36 synthetic plants. Or you're going to need 22 civilian factories to buy the requisite rubber. 22 civilian factories to buy the rubber. If we take a look at a, the US's economy, if we think about using civilian factories to buy rubber, 22 factories from the US to buy that much rubber for aircraft, even for the US, that's a kind of a big ask, especially in single player where the AI is reluctant to do proper tradebacks. 
Multiplayer, you might not have as big of a problem doing that. It's worth pointing out also that rubber is going to often be your primary limiting factor. I have here a save game from my no artillery live stream. And we can, if we take a look at this, you can see that I have you know, 93 factories on aircraft. And I have a whole lot more need for aluminum than I do for rubber. And this is with no self-sealing fuel tanks. If I had self-sealing fuel tanks, my rubber costs are going to go up and my aluminum costs stay the same. The rubber is going to be harder to come by than the aluminum because aluminum can be found all over the place. Germany can occupy aluminum. Russia's got aluminum. U.S. has aluminum. Britain has aluminum. France has aluminum. Hungary has aluminum. Japan can develop aluminum without too much effort. I mean, there's a lot of options for aluminum. Rubber, you're stuck either occupying very specific territories, owning very specific territories, or using synthetic plants or buying. Those are your options. And if we talk about using self-sealing fuel tanks on medium airframes, if I have 90 factories on medium airframes and I want to use synthetic plants, I would need 54 German synthetic plants at limited exports to supply those factories with the requisite rubber. That is an insane number of synthetic plants. But if it's worth it, maybe it's worth using. So I went into a save game and made a test and said, okay, let's test two different kinds of planes against self-sealing fuel tanks. And I created a German plane with no self-sealing fuel tanks. And a French plane with self-sealing fuel tanks. And the planes are exactly the same, except for the difference in the self-sealing fuel tanks module. That's the only difference. Same guns, same range. No MEOs are involved, so we don't have MEOs messing up anything. We're just measuring the effectiveness of the self-sealing fuel tanks. And I did this with both medium and heavy fighters. I said, okay, well, let's have them fight over Benelux for a month and see what kind of results we would get. If self-sealing fuel tanks are truly worth it for a country that doesn't have easy access to rubber, we would expect that self-sealing fuel tanks would improve air-to-air -air combat performance enough to cut losses in half. And in the medium airframes, we would expect them to cut air-to-air -air losses by two-thirds. And let's take a look at these results. Okay. This is one month of flying self-sealing fuel tanks versus non-self-sealing fuel tanks. Now, if you didn't know, enemy fighter losses only report non-attrition losses, so I don't have to worry about those numbers being contaminated by, contaminated by attrition. These losses, uh, there are five accident losses, so we're not going to worry about that. But you can see that the... Self-sealing fuel tank planes lost 700, and the non-self-sealing fuel tank planes lost 1,083 in a 30-day period. This is not twice as good. The self-sealing fuel tanks are clearly better, but if you are in any kind of situation where rubber is a limiting factor, and you have more factories you want to devote to airplanes, you're not going to win by using self-sealing fuel tanks because you could get more planes and inflict more damage on the enemy if you just put more factories on non-self-sealing fuel tank planes. Adding that self-sealing fuel tank does not make your plane twice as good. It does make it better, but it's not twice as good. So you're paying twice as much rubber on a light airframe for a marginal increase in performance. What about heavy fighters? Among heavy fighters, we see similar results, but again, the self-sealing fuel tanks, which are the French planes over here, the ones that took far fewer losses than the German planes, they aren't twice as good as the German planes, which wouldn't even help in this case because the French, if you remember on the heavy fighters, they're paying three rubber per heavy fighter factory for that self-sealing fuel tank. 
again, if you are in any way limited by rubber at all, this isn't helping you. It's not helping you at all because you could just put more factories on heavy fighters and just drown the enemy in aircraft rather than restricting yourself with more rubber per plane. I shouldn't have to say this, but I do want to remind everyone that rubber is used for more than just planes. It's also used for trucks and also used for mechanized. So you do have a rubber budget that has to do a bunch of other things, not just aircraft. It's just that aircraft are the lion's share of that budget, so we are really concerned about it here. If you are blindly putting self-sealing fuel tanks into your aircraft, you are most certainly seeing an improvement in your fighters, but it may not be as efficient as doing it a different way. Now, let's also remind everyone, since self-sealing fuel tanks do not impact losses to AA, we're just analyzing fighters. If you're spending two to three rubber per CAS or tactical bomber, you're really burning through your rubber to little or no advantage, unless for some reason your CAS are also getting shot down by lots of enemy planes, in which case you shouldn't be sending CAS out like that. They should instead be multi-rolls, or you should be doing something different anyway. When should we use self-sealing fuel tanks? Well, there are situations we should use them. Uh, we have to be strategic in our thinking because they are not an automatic use. We should use self-sealing fuel tanks if you produce a ton of your own rubber, if you are able to buy rubber at puppet prices. Remember, Britain has puppets that they can easily buy tons of rubber from. As long as they can ship that rubber to Britain, it's no big deal. Uh, if you are Japan and you occupy the Dutch East Indies, you've got the rubber to do self-sealing fuel tanks. That's no problem. And while this is going to not apply to 95% of countries, if you are for some weird reason capped on aluminum compared to rubber, then yeah, you might want to invest in self-sealing fuel tanks. The last thing you should be doing though is just putting self-sealing fuel tanks in everything and not even thinking about it because that's a, that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. This just in, it's counterfactual from the future with breaking news. Should we be using self-sealing fuel tanks on strategic bombers? Uh, no. Why double the rubber cost of an already expensive plane when you can do one of two things? Either escort your strategic bombers with fighters or send them to bomb at night. What you shouldn't be doing is sending strategic bombers during daylight hours with no fighter escorts against significant enemy air opposition. And even if that is your plan, rather than doubling their rubber cost, you might want to mount defensive armament instead on the strategic bombers to increase defense but also claim some enemy fighter losses. Okay, that about wraps it up for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this particular test. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. It's certainly not going to be Icelandic American cooperation, but I'm going to probably poll the community, see what they want. I don't know enough about the history of S South America to comment on the value of the upcoming DLC. Looks interesting. Brazil does have a, an interesting place in the war, but I don't know enough to be able to say whether this is good, bad, indifferent. I don't know yet. Uh, but until then, I hope everyone else is having a wonderful day. It's actually sunny, and we don't have any power outages for once today. And I hope everything is good where you all are. And until I see you again, I hope everything is great. See you later.